Avatar 2, Avatar The Way of Water. Welcome to Mirror Domains Movie News, your place for entertainment headlines. This is a live news show for movie fans where we talk about all the big trending movie news headlines of the day. The lead of Battle Angel 2, is it possible that it could still happen? Uh, Violent Knight has a post credit scene, did you know about that? Harrison Ford gives us a quote about possibly passing on the torch in the new Indiana Jones movie. Um, we'll talk about that. And, uh, you know, I was going to start off with all the Avatar 2 headlines, but uh, we saw on the pre-show that a new trailer dropped for The Pale Blue Eye. So let's take a look at that first, guys. The Pale Blue Eye is uh, a Netflix movie with Christian Bale where he's... Uh, well, let's just read the synopsis here. <laughs> a world-weary detective is hired to investigate the murder of a West Point cadet. Stymied by the cadet's code of silence, he enlists one of their own to help unravel the case. A young man the world would come to know as Edgar Allan Poe and uh, we saw the teasers for this and I thought it had a little bit of a flavor of um, Sleepy Hollow you know that Tim Burton film January 6th is when this gets released on Netflix with some select theaters here in December but I like Christian Bale and uh, who else is in this Gillian Anderson Harry Melling is playing Edgar Allan Poe and uh, yeah I was told that um, uh, so he's got a couple people in here from uh, Harry Potter, right? Him and Timothy Spall was in uh, Harry Potter. Was Toby Jones in Harry Potter? Yeah, he was. He was the voice of Dobby, wasn't he? <laughs> Robert Duvall's going to be in this. So, uh, yeah, the trailer dropped this morning. Um, let's just go over and take a look at some of the snapshots. If you want to go see my full reaction to it, guys, go watch the pre-show. And uh, you'll watch me watch it and get uh, my full well, my full reaction to it. I, I like the set pieces in it. Uh, I do like Christian Bale. Um, he was probably the highlight of Thor Love and Thunder for me. Uh, he's a, he always gives us a great performance. And I still think that Amsterdam is probably my second favorite performance from him. It's hard to beat American Psycho, right? <laughs> Just the levels that he was going to in that. Um, and I liked him in Amsterdam. And of course, as uh, Bruce Wayne, I thought he did a fantastic job in that as well. Um, good mood. Uh, the tone, the color palette in this really helps establish that kind of uh, somber feel to it. Uh, okay, so there's Toby Jones right there, right? He's uh, the guy who does the autopsy. Okay. Yeah, so he gets enlisted to go see this murder, and uh, he enlists... Edgar Allan Poe, who of course you know is the poet, um, who did like The Raven and stuff like that. Did a lot of uh, darker themed poetry. I need, I need to read some more Edgar Allan Poe. Maybe I'll pick something up at the library. And there he is right there. Uh, he, he was also in... Um, uh, he also played one of the chess players that taught Beth in Queen's Gambit, right? Oh my lord. Um, yeah, so maybe, I don't know, maybe they're going to allude to, uh, this kind of dark path as to why he wrote some of his darker stories. Um, but I, I think it looks good. Yeah, there, there's a better shot of him. Uh, he's definitely grown up for sure. Right. Um, and it looks like he's branching out and getting some decent roles, which is good for him as an actor or why not? Uh, the pale blue eye guys. Uh, let's see what people are saying. The trailer just dropped, so I don't expect a whole lot of comments here. This looks like it might be a winner. Christian Bale is a phenomenal actor. I agree with that, for sure. I miss uh, movies like this. Just good old-fashioned suspense thrillers. Uh, I will watch anything as long as Bale is in it. So, yeah, you got the Bale fans out here uh, in full force, it seems like. Um, so, it's going to be like a mystery. He's a detective, right? So, uh, that's cool. Uh, the Pale Blue Eye, guys. Uh, January 6th, we may have to do f a full live watch along for this um, on the channel because uh, I'm intrigued. It got me intrigued. Uh, the production values look good and uh, I'm looking forward to it. We'll see when it comes out in theaters, guys. It's just over two hours there. So uh, we'll see when it uh, when the select theaters. It's probably not going to be a wide release. It's going to be something just to make sure that it gets that window for Oscar consideration kind of thing. 
Okay, let's get into the Avatar Way of Water headlines. Um, a lot of people saw it last night because it had a premiere over in, uh, was it somewhere in Europe or something? Um, but yeah, a, a lot of the critics and stuff came out and uh, we'll take a look at some of the snapshot reviews. This is a splashed all over the trades today, guys, because Avatar The Way of Water does come out next Thursday and I'll be seeing it in 2D because um, <laughs> all my theaters close to me uh, were playing it in 3D and um and then there's 3d with the high frame rate too i, I don't want to see it in the high frame rate because my my eyes with the glasses on i don't i don't want to be bugged out man uh so i'm seeing it in a normal 2d presentation which is the way that uh, i prefer to see it uh but let's take a look at what some people are saying here mike ryan says uh we never bet against james cameron to spare the hyperbole but i've never seen anything like this from a technical visual standpoint um you've never seen anything like this um cartoon are you sure you haven't seen anything like this man yeah uh you see what's going to happen here guys avatar um the way of water because it is a big blockbuster it's going to have that shine to it it's um it's going to have that kind of like oh my god i just got off the the roller coaster and i'm like <laughs> that was so fun man uh, i want to try it again kind of thing it's going to have that kind of shine that a lot of people are going to have and you got to remember these uh, early viewings here are for critics um people with press passes that get invites and stuff like that um and it's are people like that really going to badmouth the movie? We will find some. So we got to be uh, calculated here as to wh uh, how we're weighing through some of these uh, these comments um, that are splashed up all over the page. Now, uh, some of these sites didn't do a very good job. Oh, yeah, there's Mike Ryan again. I don't even know who the heck that is. Um, happy to say The Way of Water is phenomenal, bigger, bigger and more emotional than Avatar. The film is visually breathtaking, visceral, and incredibly engrossing. The story, the spectacle, the spirituality, the beauty. Uh, so you're, what the heck are you talking about, man? Just, uh, the movie making and storytelling is absolute finest. Well, I don't doubt that. It's Cameron. And I don't, I, I, I don't doubt Cameron. Um, I just don't know why it has to be three hours. Anyway, James Cameron once again shows filmmakers how it's done. Uh, I've said it a thousand times, never doubt. Avatar, The Way of Water. Yeah, visceral filmmaking. So uh, Variety here is at least, oh, there's Perry. Variety is at least put up the uh, the actual Twitter captures here. Uh, Hollywood Reporter just kind of put it in uh, paragraph form, which kind of is not that good. Uh, let's see what Perry said here. Um, Avatar, The Way of Water is pretty incredible. I had faith James Cameron would raise the bar with the effects, but the visuals are mind-blowing. One stunning frame after the next, but the thing I dug most is how the technical feats always feel in service of character and world-building. Oh, she's had a second one, too. As far as story, it's a lot of movie, and I'm eager for a second viewing to revisit some details. But on the first uh, watch, it's a mighty effective exploration of community and family dynamics. Okay. Well, we knew that was going to be about family. Like, that's the heart of it. We've seen... That's all we saw in the trailers, right? <laughs> Returning cast is great, but the newcomers are major standouts, particularly Britton Dalton as Loak. Okay. That was just... Yeah, they're on the run again from the humans that come to guest mine the planet. Um, and then they're going to kill us. <laughs> that's not good. Uh, anyway, <laughs> you guys heard me talk about that angle before. Uh, as Avatar is, uh, Stan, I had high hopes for Avatar The Way of Water, and for me it totally delivers. Uh, sure it's a long, a little long, but it's worth the gorgeous visuals, wonderful new characters, a total thrill. Um, yeah. Have now seen Avatar twice, and overwhelmed by, you've seen it twice? And both by its technical mastery and ex unexpectedly intimate emotional scope yes the world is expanded and the sequels tease but the characters are most important cameron is in top form especially in final act uh, yeah i heard the uh, good things about uh, the final act chris schober in the live chat says i heard they might make a wednesday season two yeah they they, they are we'll talk about that a little bit in just a few moments uh, i saw you avatar the way of water if you think you've seen avatar think again only repeat of the OG is that never experienced anything like it. Uh, is it better than the first? Easily. 
3D water. I'm not going to watch it in 3D, so I don't know. I won't. I won't be able to weigh in with that. Um, creatures are surreal and it's downright moving. There's a major Titanic homage. Okay, so it's a spectacle, and we knew that. We knew that that was what it was going to be because of the trailers. But I want to know a little bit more about the story, guys. The trailers didn't show us too much about the story, other than they're on the run from the humans, and they want to try to keep their family together. Um, let's go over to the uh, actual Twitter and see what's going on out there and see if we can get some uh, other... Oh, Scott Mance. There we go. Uh, we, we we trust Scott Mance here on the channel. Avatar The Way of Water is breathtakingly beautiful with the most incredible VFX I have ever seen. And he said that he saw it in 3D. Okay. The story itself is, a weak, is weaker than the first and feels drawn out at 3 hours and 10 minutes. But it always uh, great to look at the last hour is amazing. Okay, so yeah, the last hour. People are just raving about the last hour. And this is what I said about um, uh, The Violent Night. Yeah, the last 20 minutes when he's actually throwing down are good. It's, it's fun. But why did we have to have like a 40-minute lull here where pretty much nothing happened? It was just him sitting in an attic talking on a radio. And people said that it was awesome. Ah, like people for like. <sighs> uh, the, yeah, um, the fact that people are saying that somewhat it um, has a lull in the middle. Gives me pause. Um, Avatar, The Way of Water. Imagine being dumb enough to bet against James Cameron. No, and I didn't bet against James Cameron. It's going to make money, guys. It's going to make a huge amount of money. It's probably going to make one point. 4 billion, I would say. 1.4 is where I would say. Billion dollars. Um, the effects and the action is breathtaking. Okay, so that's pretty much the sentiment of everybody, right? Uh, yeah, Avatar, never bet against... Everybody's saying that. Never bet against James Cameron. Never bet against... Oh, let's just quiet about it. How could you all be using the same quote? <laughs> I don't get it. Uh... I'm not trying to detract it here, guys. Uh, if you're really excited for this, by all means, go have at it. Have at it. Um, by all means. Because for me, it's kind of like, I love baseball. I really do. Um, but for me, it's kind of like, I stopped watching once I knew that uh, who the bad team was going to win the World Series. Yeah, it happened. It's big. Lots of people watched it. Lots of people had fun with it. And it is what it is. That's what that's what, sort of the way that I feel about Avatar The Way of Water. And I know that's not what people want to hear. They want to hear me go, oh, yes, I'm so excited. I love it. I love it. Give me more. Give me more. It's, I don't care about the story. I just want to see the visuals. It's all about the visuals, man. Um, yeah, that's what people want to hear. Even Snoop Dogg seems like he may have weighed in. <laughs> cool. Um, all right. So... Uh, hopefully, uh, we won't tread into anything too salacious there. It doesn't have a Rotten Tomato score yet. No, it doesn't. So it's just the social media reviews are out um, for this. But I'll see you next Thursday, guys. Uh, I'm seeing it at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So I should be having my uh, straight out of the theater reaction by around uh, 6, 30, 7 o'clock-ish next Thursday for Avatar The Way of Water. Yeah. Looking forward to it, man. Um, don't get me wrong here. Uh, I am looking forward to it. It's just, I, uh, I, I just, I'm, I'm, just, I'm I just, I don't know, man. <sighs> I'm mixed. All right, let's talk about the box office projections. What's going to happen with that? Uh, because as I said, it's going to probably make around $1.4 billion. Avatar The Way of Water China release may decide how big the box office will be. Uh, really? You know, uh, Spider-Man No Way Home made $1.7 billion and it didn't even get released in China. So, it can make money without be, without the China. Everybody seems to be caught up on this. It has to have Chinese box office to make money. Well, yeah, if it does, it'll make another couple hundred million dollars, but it doesn't need it. Um, may decide how big the box office will be. Oh, yeah, and I remember seeing headlines about this. They're having, like, lockdowns that have may have eased. There was like protests about it too, right? Um, okay. 
Well, that'll be a consideration for sure, because it's one of the few films that uh, got a, a Chinese approval to be uh, released there. While with China clamping down on Hollywood imports in the past year, okay, Avatar uh, 2 has seen as a considerable coup coup what <laughs> i don't know um but i know movies can make a lot of bank without the chinese market uh it'll factor in for sure obviously i mean come on um it depends on what the lockdown is like there too uh but don't worry about it guys it's going to make a lot of money for the reason that not a lot of other stuff is coming out there's going to be a lot of the awards movies coming out with the whale and stuff like that um and that Whitney Houston picture is coming out. But like the other big ones that were supposed to be coming out were uh, like Shazam 2 was supposed to be coming out at Christmas as well, but that got pushed, right? Uh, so a lot of people are not going to have a lot of other things to go to other than Avatar 2 over the Christmas break. So it's going to have a lot of breathing room, um, which the first film had uh, like a month and a half of good breathing room. Um It'll be the big thing. And as I said, it's going to make a lot of bank. A lot of people will be coming out of it with the big smile on their faces saying it's the best thing that they've ever seen in their entire lives. But then once that goes away, uh, I think a lot of people will be just like they were with the first film. It'll be kind of like, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a really great spectacle. Go and check it out. But then they admitted to themselves afterwards that, yeah, it was just the story was Fern Gully in space. It was Dances with Wolves kind of thing. But that's James Cameron's shtick. If you don't know that, that's exactly what he does. He takes something familiar, and you have to do that to appeal to the wider audiences. I know that, and I hope you guys know that too. Um, you have to have something very basic uh, that people recognize and that they can relate to. It's the story um, theme that people latch on to, and then the characters kind of thing, right? Um, and I'm hoping that what people are saying about the characters uh, in this movie uh, is on point, that you're going to start, you're going to be rooting for them and stuff. Uh, for me, it's still a little bit hard for me because they're CG characters, their faces and stuff, uh, and they, they look human, but they're not human, right? So it's kind of like my brain still kind of is able to separate that. Um, I don't know. Don't worry about the box office for it, though. I, I, it's going to make lots of money. Lots of money at the box office, for sure. And... Uh, We'll, we'll keep our eye on it. We'll be tracking it. Uh, I, I predict $1.4 billion for Avatar The Way of Water. $1.4 billion. There you go. I think it'll make it the number one movie of the year, box office-wise, right? Because uh, Top Gun Maverick was $1.2, $1.3, somewhere around there. All right. Uh, also in theaters right now, guys, is uh, Violent Night. And why am I talking about this right now? Uh, because it is in theaters. And this is something that will be... Uh, <laughs> competing for the top five uh, because people are having fun with it. And it's just something I, I wanted to talk about this because as much as you've seen me kind of rag a little bit about Avatar, um, it does sort of feel like maybe I've lost my touch with what the, not common, not basic, but like the casual movie fans like. Um, because as I said, when I did my Violent Night review, there was that lull in the story that was just kind of boring. And I thought people would call it out for that, but they didn't. Uh, they just wanted to see David Harbour smash people. And he does. And he does do it in a brutal way. And those parts of the movie were cool to watch. But for me, I just couldn't forgive it for that, uh, for the length, mostly. And the lull in the story. And that's, I think, what's going to happen with, um, I think that's what's going to happen with Avatar as well. I'm going to be able to recognize that it's got, pacing issues well um, hopefully not uh, i'm not going in with that mindset but if it is i'm going to call it out guys um and i stand by my violent night review uh why violent night satire fails yeah and there's an article up here on screen rant that kind of pulls apart <laughs> the uh some plot details in here saying that there's like plot holes but guys violent night is just one of those movies where you just go in and you turn off your brain and you'll have fun hopefully if you don't get bored by the middle part that uh, that's what I wanted to do. Like, yeah, I recognize that. But I guess there was even a post credit scene. Uh, <laughs> I, I, guys, I barely stuck around for the finale of the film. I was standing up at near the door, wanting to get the hell out of there <laughs> by the time the movie was done. Uh, 
because it just kept on going on and on. And it's like, okay, we get it. We get it. Um, I was not going to stick around for a post credit scene. But if you watch the movie, I guess the post credit scene had to do with Bertrude, which was the son who was into social media or something like that, that more people just have come around to uh, believe in Santa Claus. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, no, I was not sticking around to watch that. But uh, I guess it does sort of set up the sequel because they want to have him go back to the North Pole and find Mrs. Claus, although they kind of alluded that Mrs. Claus was dead. They, they kind of did that. I don't know how that'll happen. I don't know. Because uh, the word talks about a violent night, too. Um, guys, it, it just... It, the production budget was $20 million. It just made $20 million um, worldwide in opening weekend. So it's going to make a little bit of ground up for the marketing and for the theatrical costs. And before people say, well, it's just made $20 million. It's really good. It's really good. And then those people that say that the box office was good for Violent Night turn around and say that the box office for Black Adam was awful? Oh, no, 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 no. Because Black Adam has made more than its production budget and its marketing. So guys, don't be careful here with what you're listening to. Some people spout sometimes because sometimes they get a little high on their horse. I don't know who I'd be talking about, but uh, I see it out there. <laughs> uh, and it's a little bit of a frustration of mine sometimes. All right. Uh, let's talk about this Alita Battle Angel 2. Um, Alita Battle Angel 2 sequel um, gets hopeful update. I was late to the party for the first Alita Battle Angel. I never watched it in the theaters. And uh, when I watched it, I think it was on Netflix for a while, right? And I saw it there. I was uh, ashamed. I was ashamed that I didn't go see it in the theaters because I felt like I would have benefited from, uh, from seeing it. I think it was because it was playing in 3D or something. Uh, if it's playing in 3D, guys, I don't go. I, I, I prefer to watch it in 2D. Uh, the same thing happened with Judge Dredd for me. Carl Urban's Dredd. I, it was only playing in 3D. I, and I was like, I don't know. I'm not going to go see it. And, and and I was part of the reason why we were, we're not going to get a Dredd 2. Because studios were infatuated with 3D after Avatar. And everything had to be post-conversion 3D. Um, anyway. Enough about that. Uh, I really liked Avatar. Uh, sorry. I really liked Alita Battle Angel. Um, and uh, I hope that there's a sequel. So let's see what there's going on here in this quote um, from, uh, I guess, the producer uh, of the movie. Um, Deadline. Red Carpet premiere. Uh, Lando. John Lando spoke to Deadline. And he said this. Uh, well, there's a little film called Alita Battle Angel that we've, uh, we'd love to circle back and do a sequel to. We've been talking to Robert Rodriguez, who directed the first one, about that, and hopefully that'll come, that comes to fruition. Uh, asking about a sequel. Uh, I guess it would have to be with the box office, but I I'm talking about it now because James Cameron did, this was going to be one of James Cameron's babies. And this is why I, why I kind of like, pull my hair out a little bit when I hear him talking about trying to make Avatar 6 and 7, uh, like getting ahead of himself, because he could have made, I want to see him do other stuff like Alita, because um, if it had his hands on it, uh, a lot of people, just more audiences would have gone to see it. Uh, I like Rodriguez at times, but um, people really didn't like his uh, contributions to Boba Fett. Um, and I think it maybe I th it was probably one of my favorite uh, Rodriguez's films uh, for sure because uh, of the visuals and stuff like that. And I like the story. I really, really like the story. So um, there's only talks, guys. Uh, but if Avatar two does well, obviously Lando, who is producing it, works with James Cameron, knows James Cameron, uh, knows this property. Um, they would have to come up with some kind of a feasible plan to make it that wouldn't cost like $200 million. That's the thing, right? Uh, the first uh, the first Alita didn't make as much money at the box office uh, that it should have. Let me just pull up box office mojo here and we'll take a look at it. Um, Alita. Battle Angel. There we go. Let's see what it did. $404 million. So that's not bad on a budget of 170. So yeah, it made bank. It made bank. 
And people would say, well, it has to make three times the amount to make its money. No, no, no. That's a good return. Uh, same thing with Black Adam, guys. Black Adam's going to... Uh, they'll, they're still going to use Black Adam as a character. I don't know if they'll make a sequel to it, but they'll definitely... You're going to see a lot more rock. And I think they will make a sequel to the Black Adam movie. Because um, I do want to see more, especially once we get to the Shazam stuff. But I think that... It, like, yeah, this kind of a return, 404.9 uh, worldwide on 170 budget. Uh, keep that budget around the same range, maybe a little bit less... Uh, now that you got the volume, the volume technology, I think you could definitely turn out another Alita Battle Angel when she climbs up to the higher city and stuff like that. I want to see more of that. I want to see that. Um, and the girl who was in it, she did a fantastic job too. Yeah, it was a nice film. Um, that's just pretty much all the... Uh, this article says is that uh, they would like to go back to it. They're talking with Robert Rodriguez. Uh, I'll keep my eye on it for sure because um, it's a property that I really enjoyed. And if, you know, James Cameron was, was he produced the first one, right? Uh, so if he's in the producer role again, um, it is what it is. Hopefully that'll happen. Hopefully that'll happen. Um, well, uh, keep my eye on it for sure. And just one quick little story here before we take a break, guys. Harrison Ford. Uh, talks Indiana Jones 5. Uh, Harrison Ford comments on the idea of Indy passing on the baton in the Indiana Jones 5. And this is something else, too, that's kind of ha happening in the cultural zeitgeist kind of thing. Uh, that um, he's getting older, guys, and he's got to pass on the baton to a younger Indiana Jones. It's kind of like people get stuck with that in their mindset, right? It's kind of like, no, he doesn't have to. Why can't this, the story end with him? But uh, he was asked the question, uh, during the red carpet, uh, for something, uh, what was it there? I can't quite see what it is in the background. Somebody asked him for this, uh, for, I think maybe it was this at a Comic-Con or something. Amazing trainer. Are you really ready to hang up your hat this time? And are you passing the baton? No, I'm just telling the story. Yeah. Telling so the story. You'll see. Said, You'll see. You'll see. Thank I hope you. you like it. Yeah, so people are saying, are you going to pass the baton? They, they think that the, uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge is going to be picking up the mantle as the next Indiana Jones. Well, no. It, it, there's only one Indiana Jones, and he's made it very clear that Harrison Ford is it. Um, people wanted to see like him maybe tell the tale, and they'll, they'll have flashbacks to a younger Indiana Jones played by a different actor. I don't know about that. I don't think that'll happen. It doesn't sound like that's going to happen. I think this will be his last outing with James Mangold. I'm I'm on board with James Mangold doing this because everybody liked Logan and uh, Wolverine. So, he, yeah, his quote was, no, I'm just telling a story, telling a story. You'll see. You'll see. I hope you like it. And that's humble. I think it is. Um, yeah. And I hope they just, I hope they don't kill him off too. <laughs> I don't want to I don't want it to end on that kind of note. I just want to have kind of like a happier happy ever after ending kind of like what the last crusade had where they right off into the sunset at the end. Um but you'll see this headline over the pages too. Um this will be all over the uh moving news pages for today. All right guys, uh you're watching Mirror Domains Movie News. If you don't know, you can follow me on all the other social media handles right there. Uh, sometimes I post some of the stories and behind the scenes looks on the TikTok and Instagram. And uh, what else can you find here on the channel? We do full live watch along for series like Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday's up on the channel, guys, and a nice full playlist for you guys. A lot of people are reacting well to it. We had lots of fun with it. I thought it was probably one of the better series of the year. What else? We do full movie watch alongs for things like Godzilla vs. Kong. Troll. Yeah, it was a kaiju type of week for us last week, guys. We watched a couple of big uh, monster movies and we had lots of fun with that. Uh, of course, we also watched RR&R this week, uh, a Telugu film, but we watched the Hindi dub version of that, and um, that was a three-hour stream. We had lots of fun with that, too. One of the better movies of the year, I would say. Uh, later on, um, I don't know if it's going to be today or tomorrow, but we are we are going to be watching everything everywhere all at once. Uh, I got uh, just 
to get my account set up for that, and then we'll get underway. And on the weekends, we do the Horror Weekly Roundup, where we talk about all the big horror movie news headlines that drop during the week, uh, providing that my USB cable doesn't crap out. And uh, yeah, of course, there you know that we do uh, movie news live daily throughout the week, where we talk about uh, all the movie news headlines we do trailer reactions here guys during the pre-show uh, we do the pre-show here uh, where i just turn on the camera i get things set up here in the studio i play a little bit of my guitar warm up the old vocal cords i just talk about the reactions on the channels and stuff like that and if a trailer drops we watch that in the pre-show so if you were looking for my trailer reactions go to the pre-show uh, they're all in there and you'll be able to find trailer reactions there um Straight out of the theater reactions, full movie reviews, and uh, yeah, lots of cool stuff here on Mirror Domains. All right. Uh, actually, talking about Wednesday, let's talk about Wednesday because um, it's getting really good numbers on Netflix. Uh, Wednesday rocks up uh, Netflix all-time series chart. Uh, the show will likely become the third on the streamer to pass a billion hours of viewing in the first four weeks, and it, it's well-earned. Uh, Jenna Ortega as Wednesday Adams was fantastic. And Luis Guzman as uh, Gomez. <laughs> He's only in two episodes, guys. Uh, I liked it. Uh, I thought he did a good job, too. Uh, but that dance scene is getting all the all the uh, <laughs> views right now. Because people are milk, milking it for everything that it's worth. Like, um, there's videos out there that she choreographed it herself. She had COVID while she was doing it. Uh, phenomenal actress and uh, i she's when you watch a lot of the interviews and stuff and the promotional stuff that she's been out doing for it she comes across as a very humble person right um she had a big year and uh, i would say that this was jenna ortega's year for sure because she had x and we did a full live reaction for that on the channel uh she had scream i really liked her in scream and i forgot that she was in studio 666 that dave Grohl foo fighters movie yeah, she was in that, and um, that's cool. Good year for her, and of course, then she had Wednesday to cap off the end of the year, which will be a huge hit for her. So, uh, yeah, guys, it's uh, 411 viewing hours worldwide of December 4th. That makes it the first any English language series that has topped 400 million in a week. Uh, basically, it is going to become the third, guys. It's likely to pass Dahmer. Yeah, Dahmer had big numbers too. Uh, it's sitting around 752.52 million hours. Dahmer had 856 uh, in coming the next week to take second place. Okay, so Dahmer is second place. Uh, Wednesday is number three. Wednesday is number three. Dahmer is number two. And then Squid Game is number one, right? Squid Game? Yeah, 1.65 billion. Uh, oh, sorry, no. Stranger Things season four. Oh yes, yeah. Squid Game is number one. Stranger Things is number two. What am I not rating here? Uh, in the coming week to take over second place and has an ex excellent chance of becoming the third next Netflix show in any language to pass a billion hours. Oh, so in a, over a, a billion hours. So Squid Game has a billion and Stranger Things has a billion. Stranger Things season four which we did a full live reaction series for that as well too, guys. So it's been a good year for series, and it's going to be hard to say what was better between the Stranger Things Season 4 Wednesday series. We had some really cool series watch-alongs here on the channel. Uh, we did uh, House of the Dragon, Rings of Power. Uh, really cool, really, really awesome series out this year. And that's good news for Wednesday. And if you really liked it and you want to check out my reactions, Please do. Um, it helps out the channel. And it, uh, you know, just <laughs> watching my reactions and trying to unfold the mystery can be kind of a fun little journey for you guys to follow along there. Chris Schober in the live chat says, I just watched the Star Wars Bad Batch Season 2 official trailer on YouTube today. Yeah, I saw that that's out. Um, I never watched the first season of Bad Batch. Uh, <sighs> I know. Uh, so, yeah. It is what it is. Okay. Let's get into uh, The Witcher Backlash. The Witcher showrunner addresses fan backlash to Henry Cavill's exit. Lauren Schmidt Hisrich 
addresses fan backlash. <laughs> yeah, uh, showrunner. And uh, I guess they're asking for viewers to watch season three. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a very interesting shot of Cavill right there. Guys, I think you know where I stand on this. Uh, I think that, yeah, when season three comes out, I think, and after season four comes out with Liam Hemsworth taking over the role as Geralt, I don't think people will be on board with it. I think the numbers are going to plummet and Netflix will pull the plug. Uh, let's see what he says, what they say here. It's a big deal for us too. And that's the thing. There's a lot of talk and rumors about, and we finally understand why fans are going to be there. What I will say is please come back for the Witcher season three so that we can continue to do this. <laughs> yeah, please watch us so we can still make money. Uh, so we can still have a job to do. Obviously that Cavill's departure is huge news, but what I want to do is this has to stay about Blood Origin and Declan, the cast and crew, that this is their time in the spotlight. Um, well, there's a petition to try to get him to come back, but he's made his decision, guys. He's, he's Superman. He's going to be Superman for us. Uh, and it took precedence for him because he didn't like the direction that the showrunners, you, look, I'm, he's looking at you, Lauren. He didn't like the, the direction that the show was going. Lauren Schmidt is rich. Uh, please watch the show, they say, so we can make more. Uh, I don't think a lot of people will. Uh, Our Glass Viking says, great series this year, I agree. Plenty to come, and next year looks great for movies. Yes, it does. Next year's going to be stacked. For movies. Uh, let's continue on talking about series because uh, Ryan Johnson is in the headlines because he had Glass Onion that's coming out this this month, uh, but he's going to be working on a series after this and it's going to be called Poker Face. It's an old school mystery show. Teases star Little Rel Howery. He's going to be a, a guest on the Peacock series. So this is going to be for Peacock. Um, poker face uh he says it's going to be an old school feel to it kind of like in the 80s these mystery type shows with guest stars okay and then the question is well if it's about mysteries how can that avoid the knives out comparisons right let's go over to the imdb and take a look at this what they got up here uh january 26th on peacock hey i like her well, what was her name again uh let Natasha Leone, 10 episodes. Charlie Kale. So it's going to have, she's going to be the main, uh, the main character in this. Main character. Cool. Uh, and then you're going to have guest spots. Adrian Brody is going to be in there. Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Uh, well, we know that uh, Benjamin Brandt, we know that Ryan Johnson has got enough tout that, uh, or clout that he can get in people to uh, cameo and stuff. So that's cool. Poker face. What does the synopsis say here? Charlie has an extraordinary ability to determine when someone is lying. When she hits the road with her Plymouth Barracuda and with every stop encounters a new cast of characters and strange crimes, she can't, can't help but solve. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Natasha Leone's going to be taking over that role. I hear... That's uh, that's cool, because I hear that she was good in that uh, Netflix series recently. That was a little bit about time travel, a little bit. It had an abstract angle to it like that kind of thing, right? And in this one, I guess she can tell if someone's lying or not. Okay. Well, I'll be looking forward to that. That sounds kind of cool, right? Ryan Johnson Poker Face. Poker Face. Season one. Uh, is that what it said there? Season one. Now that's getting a little bit ahead of itself. Season one. Um, yeah. Um, oh, I forgot to answer that question about Wednesday. Season two. Yeah. The showrunners for Wednesday um, had had come out. Uh, we talked about it. I think it was last week that came up. They, they had a scope for like two or three seasons, actually, for Wednesday. Um, and they're happy that, well, if it's making big numbers like that, we as we just talked about we're going to get a season two and i well, i can't say <laughs> that i wouldn't want to see it i'd say thumbs up get that going as fast as you can guys because a lot of people are liking wednesday for sure and i 
hope this poker face with uh, Ryan Johnson is going to be cool too. All right, let's move on to uh, some hit or miss headlines here, guys. Uh, we're 1140, so uh, we're a little bit ahead of schedule. Um, this is just where if it's a hit, we'll talk about it. If it's a miss, we'll move on. Uh, Joker 2 art image imagines Lady Gaga's Harley Quinn costume. A fan. So this is a fan art. But um, we know that Joker 2, Folly A Dew, is going to be somewhat of a musical. It's going to have some musical numbers in it as she uh, kind of falls in love with the Joker in Arkham Asylum. And uh, yeah, um, Lady Gaga is going to be playing Harleen Quinzel. So uh, <laughs> let's see what this full poster looks like. Uh, Folly A Dew. This is on... Uh, Jake Jax Saunders um, Instagram. Uh, let's see if I can pull that up a little bit bigger there. Let's take a look at it. Um, cool fan art. Uh, the face is a little bit distorted there, so you can't really see too much there. Uh, if they do musical numbers where it's just kind of like them going into a psychosis in their heads, then yeah, maybe we can see stuff like this. And that's what I would like to see. So like as a uh, con uh, concept, uh, I was going to say conceptual, but as a like, you know, concept art, I would love to see something like that. Um, what do you got here? It's only got 300, 3,600 likes. But uh, I saw the headline. Of course, I'm a Joker fan, so I had to click on that. I think that was somewhat of a, uh, somewhat of a hit. Uh, great uh, Ed poster indeed. Chris Schober also says, I just watched this. Uh, I'm so excited for The Mandalorian Season 3 uh, because I heard CGI Luke is rumored to be returning. Um, for Mandalorian Season 3? I hope so too. A great 3D style poster. Is that, is, was it in 3D? I don't know. That's cool. I like it. Um, CGI Luke in... Uh, well, we can take a, we'll take a look at that. Uh, we're, we're in the hit and miss area here. Let me just go to my sources and see what's going on with that. Um, I'll pull that up. Uh, maybe we'll do the next hit or miss here. Let's do the next hit or miss. Uh, producers didn't want Michael Bay to read the first Transformers script. Yeah, because he directed a lot of the uh, <laughs> Transformers. Is this a hit? Not really, guys. Uh, if you go on and read this rather verbose article, all the... They were afraid that uh, it was going to be directed too much towards kids. That's all the, the this article says, is that they were worried that he wouldn't want to do it because it had, uh, had appealed to the younger audience. Of course, he put his spin on it and made some crass jokes in there. <laughs> I don't mind crass, but uh, he was let a little too much of a, a, a leash on that. <laughs> like, uh, he just ran with it. I think that was kind of a mess. Yeah. They were afraid that he didn't, he wouldn't want to direct it because it was direct, directed towards kids. Um, not a, yeah, that's not really that compelling to talk about. Uh, let's go and see what this uh, Star Wars CGI Luke story, perhaps maybe if I can find it. Because uh, that's what I like to do here. Bad Batch uh, must find their way in rapidly changing galaxy. Um, Bad Batch season two poster. Uh, okay, so a lot of Bad Batch stuff there. Jonathan Kasdan says he would love to see a Star Wars Lucasfilm do Star Wars short form special presentations. <laughs> like the Star Wars uh, Christmas special? I don't know. Uh, the writers for Mandalorian Season 3, John Favreau wrote most of them. Not a big surprise there. With Filoni handing in a few uh, additional credits. That's not really much to talk about. That's kind of a no-brainer. Uh, five days ago. So no, I don't. I don't quite see the CGI Luke rumored story here. Uh, it, it would normally be in here somewhere. Maybe I just glossed over it. Um, oh, I'll keep my eye out for it for sure. Uh, and one final hit or miss headline that I do want to talk about, and I think this one will be a hit. Ten Marvel stars who are more famous than their characters, because we saw that Quentin Tarantino, I think it was last week or so, came out and said that they're Marvel doesn't really have any superstars, uh, movie stars, because the characters are bigger than the um, than the people playing them. And uh, let's see their list here that uh, Screen Rant has up. Uh, I would agree with ScarJo. 
And I would probably agree with Paul Rudd too, because Paul Rudd was bigger, was big even before he became Ant-Man, right? So let's see their list. Oscar Isaac is number 10. Yeah, Oscar Isaac is definitely bigger than Moon Knight. Uh, that's a series we watched too, guys, here on the channel. We watched Moon Knight, a uh, full series reaction. And uh, if they come out with a Moon Knight season two, I'll be looking forward to that because Oscar Isaac, the acting, yeah, from him was phenomenal. Yeah, I'd agree with that one. He's bigger than the role. Salma Hayek, I don't even know the name of the character she played. I can't even remember the Eternals for crying out loud. Uh, <laughs> we'll have to watch it, guys. Um, we'll watch it here, maybe. <sighs> Eternals. Yeah, I don't know. Um, that's phase four. And phase four has just kind of got away from people. Bradley Cooper definitely is bigger than Rocket, although he's just the voice. And um, if Rocket dies in Guardians of the Galaxy 3, I'm going to be majorly bummed out, man. Uh, Scarlett Johansson. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, she was talented. She's uh, one of my favorite actresses. She's in the top two for sure. Um uh, Samuel L. Jackson would be number one for me, our glass Viking says. Well, maybe he's on this list. Benedict Cumberbatch was big even before this, to uh, before Doctor Strange. So, yeah, uh, I would agree with that. Um, Paul Rudd, yeah, we already talked about that. Because uh, he had things going for him before he was Ant-Man. It was just cool that he is Ant-Man. Uh, Haley Steinfeld, definitely. She's She's huge. Uh, just beyond the acting. Um, her, her music is also pretty big there, too. Uh, people follow her uh, on social media for, like, fashion and stuff like that. Uh, she takes a great photo. Uh, and I still need to watch The Hawkeye. Maybe we'll get to it during the Christmas season. I'll watch, I'll binge Hawkeye. Vin Diesel. Bigger than Groot. Is he? Is he, guys, is Vin Diesel bigger than Groot? Now, I know he's got a big social media following, but his movies outside of the Fast and Furious franchise have kind of went... <laughs> oh, and, and this. And he's got Guardians. So I don't know if Vin Diesel is bigger. I would say no. I don't agree with that one. He's not bigger. Um, as, as far as a box office kind of draw. And let's just face it, guys. He doesn't have a wide range of acting. Uh, Haley Steinfeld would act circles around Vin Diesel. Um, yeah, I don't agree with that one. Uh, Florence Pugh, definitely. She, she's bigger. She, she totally is bigger than um, her Black Widow character. Uh, yeah. Um, and I liked her in Don't Worry Darling. I, I did. And I even liked her in that small movie uh, that I did a review for for called The Wonder that was on Netflix. Uh, she's a great actress. I love her. Yeah, she's going to be awesome. So, you guys think it's going to be Samuel L. Jackson? Let's just take a look. That's Robert Downey Jr. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, is he bigger? Well, if you look at the box office numbers, guys, I would say no. He's not bigger than the character because his movies outside of playing iron man have all just been like vin diesel has been brrr. people just don't go out to see it they don't they're not interested um he's a good actor um he's a good actor definitely um yeah and he can he would be somebody who could act circles around vin diesel um i do want to see him in other projects it's just they just haven't fared well and he's got, I would say this, though, perhaps. He's got a pedigree because he's been in Hollywood for a long, longer time. So, yeah, I think he'll get away as long as he doesn't come back. And I know people would like him to come back as Tony in like an alternate uh, reality version, a multiverse version of him to come back. I, I, I would just put it down, though. I'd put it down. Go out there and do other projects. He's got a movie coming out called Senior about his dad. Um, kind of like a documentary. He's going to be in that. I don't expect that one to fare well. But uh, hopefully he, he he's done stuff that I do like. Like um, I liked him as uh, Sherlock Holmes. Uh, I didn't mind Doolittle. <laughs> but he was very Tony Stark-ish in that kind of movie. And we'll have to see. 
Vin Diesel is returning for Fast 10. Yeah, we know that. Um, but Fast 10, if the budget of that I hear is going to be like close to around 400 million, it's going to have to make 900 to break you. Uh, I don't know. Fast 10 is possibly going to be one of the biggest disasters <laughs> if it doesn't fare well at the box office because we've seen the trajectory for it. It has been going down. Like the Fast 9 didn't make a billion dollars. It only made like 700 million or something. So they're flirting with uh, disaster with that. I would say that that one's kind of a hit, uh, this headline, even though that I didn't quite agree with the list. Yeah, where's Samuel L. Jackson on this list? He's definitely bigger than uh, Nick Fury because uh, he's in a lot of stuff. Story career. He's going to go down in the history books as one of the better uh, actors of our times. Uh, for sure. But I kind of agree with some of them. That, that was kind of cool. Yeah. He was good in Sherlock and Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Yeah. He was. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. does. I guess he, he, he would be on that list for me, but I, he wouldn't be number one. He wouldn't be number one. Uh, very interesting. All right, guys. Uh, let me just pull up the old Twitterverse here and uh, see if we missed anything. And uh, we'll round out the show with the Twitter Roundup. Latest reviews. Okay. A new trailer for Megan has been released. Now, you we may have to do a trailer reaction for this one. Uh, is this the trailer that I saw? Uh, yeah, okay, so yeah, this is the trailer that I saw. Yeah, she drives in this one. Um, yeah, what movie was this that I saw this on? Um... God, I see so many. Was it on Devotion that I saw this new trailer? Um, and I was told that it was an actress that plays it underneath. So it's not a robot, but it is an actress. Like, there's a face mask. This is the robot mask. But when you see her dancing and stuff, it's, I thought that was like a robot. They actually programmed a robot to do that. But I hear that it is an actual person underneath. I'm still looking forward to it. It looks creepy. Yeah, definitely. Uh, oh, you guys can't quite see the color in that. Uh, yeah, she plays the piano in this one, and she's just um, she's just sitting there. It's creepy. Um, I don't know if we'll do a trailer reaction for that one. And yeah, she pulls off the uh, the paper cutter thing and chases the guy. <laughs> uh, very creepy. James Wan. Um, looking forward to that. Seems to be a pause there for me. Oh well. Okay. Viola Davis and Jennifer Lawrence, Actors on Actors. That's one I'll be looking forward to. And I'll be listening to that um, Brendan Fraser, Actors on Actors, later on. Sorry, I, I got lost in her eyes there. Um, wow. Yeah, she's one of my favorite actresses. Be looking forward to that. Uh, the release date for Shadow and Bones Season 2 will be announced tomorrow. I didn't know that there was going to be a season two for that. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and Colin Farrell, Actors on Actors. I'll be looking forward to that one, too. Uh, so they're doing uh, magazine covers for this. Um, Janelle Monet and uh, the guy who played Elvis this year. Okay, so we just got covers for that. Pinocchio comes out this week, yeah. Pinocchio spotted in Times Square and uh, December 9th. So this Friday, guys, we will be watching Pinocchio. Our full live watch along on, for Pinocchio will be 1, 1 p.m. on Friday. We'll be watching Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio here on the channel. And I hope you guys will be looking forward to that. Uh, Brahmastra Part 1 Shiva. It's now available on Disney Plus, is it? I heard this one wasn't very, very good, though. <laughs> I heard it wasn't, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if we'll be uh, watching that one. <laughs> Charlie Cox in the new trailer for Treason. Yeah, that's the one that we were, I was talking about in the pre-show. Um, it's a series, though. This is a series. It's a mystery. Uh, somebody tries to kill uh, a foreign um, leader of some kind. Uh, intelligence person. I think it's played by Kieran Hines. Um, kind of like that kind of uh, Jack Ryan feel to it. 
but it's with Char Charlie Cox. Kind of interesting. Baz Luhrmann wins Best Director uh, in ACTA Awards for, for Elvis. Okay. Olivia de Jong, Best Supporting Actress. Okay, so, yeah, she played uh, Priscilla in um, Elvis, right? She did a good job, too. She did. Charlie speaking with his native accent will be cool. Yeah, I think he did have an accent in that one, right? Baz Luhrmann, Best Film, ACTA Awards. Austin Butler, yeah, that's his name. Uh, he was good. He was good. Um, for sure, Olivia Wilde wins an Best Drama Movie, Don't Worry Darling. Um, that one's going to kind of... I don't think that's going to fare very well for the uh, awards. Because it kind of had like that... It was overshadowed by all the drama behind the scenes. That really wasn't there. Well, I guess it was because of the Shia LaBeouf stuff. But uh, it sucks. Uh, I, I do like Olivia Wilde uh, as a director. Uh, I did like it. And uh, kudos for her. Um, good. I'm just trying to look at this dress. I've seen, wasn't Jennifer Lawrence wearing something like this recently too? <laughs> she looks good in it. Um, yeah. Elizabeth Olsen wins action movie star of 2022 at the PCAs. What are the PCAs? Dahmer wins binge worthy show of 2022. Is Dahmer really the... I binged Dahmer, but I also binged Wednesday, guys, and I binged, <laughs> uh, it's just the release thing. It's just the release schedule. Austin Butler, Selena Gomez wins comedy TV star. Cool. I don't even know what the heck these are. What is this? The PCAs. I don't even know what that stands for. Florence Pugh. She always takes a good photograph. Adam Sandler wins comedy movie star at the PCAs. Stranger Things wins. Okay, so it's uh, still a lot more award stuff. Mia Goth and Dakota Johnson in Suspiria. Okay, so that's Mia Goth and that's Dakota Johnson. Did you guys watch this version of Suspiria? Um, I didn't. Maybe I need to. I heard Avatar 4 is called the Tolkien Rider. Is it? <laughs> uh, it won't be if Avatar The Way of Water bombs, which it won't. Because <laughs> uh, Cameron said that he'll turn it off at uh, at number three. Oh, People Choice Awards is what PCA stands for. Okay. Uh, Critics Choice Awards nominations. Uh, okay, so it is award season. Though. Golden Globe Award nominees will announce next Monday, December 12th. Are we, do we care about that? Uh, House of the Dragon Season 2 begins filming March. Cool. I hope one... Uh, I hope... Uh, did you like the older Rhaenyra or the younger Rhaenyra better? Because they both did good jobs. They did. And so did so did she as Alicent. You hated her. You really hated her. But um, the older Rhaenyra, she did a good job too. Especially dealing with the... With the... the the fake husband, right? I heard Avatar 4, 5 is called The Quest for Iwa. It's a lot of speculation there. <laughs> Zendaya. Critics' Choice Awards nomination. Okay. So now the Critics' Choice are out. Uh, Lily Collins. Emily in Paris. Where is Lily Collins right now? She had that movie on Netflix where she's like... Finds that her father had locked somebody in a dungeon on the property, and then she continues to torture him. It was Simon Pegg in that movie, too. What happened to that movie? That kind of came and went. <laughs> Wes Anderson's Asteroid City will be released June 16th, 2023, starring Margot Robbie, Scarlett Johansson, Maya Hawke. Well, that's a good cast. Tilda Swinton, Hong Chao, we've just seen her in The Menu. Tom Hanks, Edward Norton, huge cast. Wes Anderson, Asteroid City. What is this? What is that movie? Let's check this out. Asteroid City.
That that caught my eye. I want to know what this is about. We like um, I'm sort of hit or miss with Wes Anderson. Sometimes his flavor gets a little too over the top. Okay, so they don't have a synopsis here other than the itinerary of a junior stargazer convention is spectacularly disrupted by world-changing events like an impact asteroid, right? Okay. So it's basically his version of Don't Look Up, is what you're telling me. Uh, looks like it's going to be a period piece. Maya Hawk and Rupert Friend. There's Maya Hawk. Huh. Yeah, she's going to be big too. Like from uh, Stranger Things, her, her stock is going up too. She's going to be a big star in the future. Kiki Palmer. Oh, it's going to have Jeff Goldblum in it. Although that doesn't look like that shirt fits in with that era. <laughs> we like Jeff Goldblum. Oh, maybe that's behind the scenes, them just getting to the set or something. Looks like he's reading the side. Oh, no, that's a mask maybe he's got on. I thought he was reading the sides. Uh, Adrian Brody. There's ScarJo. Tom Hanks. Okay, so it is set. There's They're building sets out there somewhere. Fascinating. Asteroid City. Have to keep my eye out for that one. Wes Anderson, June 23rd, 2023. You think we would get a teaser for that pretty soon then? First reactions for Avatar The Way of Water. It's the most brilliant thing that you've ever seen in your entire life. It's going to make you wish that you've never want to watch another movie ever again. Wednesday Netflix. Okay. Guys, that's about it for me today. Guys, we've run our full hour. I don't believe that I missed anything. And if I did, it's a 24-hour news cycle. We'll get to it tomorrow. Uh, yeah, it does look interesting there, Chris Schober. It definitely does. Asteroid City. Keep my eye out for that. All right, guys, that's it. Uh, if you like what you've seen, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe. Follow me on all the other social media channels. And later on today, like I think around 2 o'clock, we will be watching everything, everywhere, all at once. Uh, just due to my schedule. I just got things that I got to put in motion first. But uh, I'm going to try to get through it, guys. I'm going to try to get through it. Uh, it's the last month of the year, and I got to get through all these movies so that we can put together a, put together a respectable top 10 movies of the year. Uh, I'll see you next time tomorrow for more movie news at 11 a.m., guys. Uh, see you then here on Mirror Domains.